Well, greetings and salutations, test takers. This is Dean Tinney coming to you from my studio in fabulous Las Vegas with another explication request. This was a Series 66 test taker that requested uh, this uh, explication of QID 1521518. Uh, however, I will post this in the SIE and Series 7 and... Uh, 65 because you should definitely have a, have a handle on bid and ask and all the exams all right so let's uh, get this question done if you don't have a kaplan q bank i highly recommend it uh, with my guru 15 discount code you can get 15 percent off at checkout for any kaplan product or service uh, for that commercial kaplan allows me to give you a free look on kaplan content i'll help you on anybody's content just easier it's kaplan Anyways, client of your broker dealer currently is long a thousand shares of DEF common stock and wishes to liquidate. So that means the customer wants to sell. So very important to know the customer always sells at the low price and always buys at the high price. That's called the spread. That's how the securities industry makes a living, right? The difference between what we buy things into our inventory and what we sell things out of our inventory. I think a good analogy would be a car dealer. I buy cars low and I sell cars high. So uh, I'm going to be acting in my dealer principal capacity. I'll link to a lecture I have called Know Your Bid From Your Ask. I'll put in the video description the link there and I'll pin a comment. Uh, based on the following market maker quotes, it would be expected the firm's trader would direct the market order too. So I want to direct it. I know my customer is going to get the low price, but I want my customer to receive the highest of the low prices. Again, it'd be like you're trading in your car. You know that when you trade in the car, you're going to get the turn the car back into money. You're going to get the low price, but you'd like to get the highest of the low prices. So as we look here at the various market makers, it looks like the best of the low prices and the best price available to my customer when they sell is $9.75. And there's two market makers that have that, market maker C and uh, market maker D. So 50-50 here. And then it says my customer is selling a thousand. Now, market maker C says that they're willing to buy 20 round lots in their inventory at 975. 20 round lots, that's 2,000 shares and willing to sell. We don't care about the 985 here, but uh, 2,000 out. Whereas we look at market maker D, they're only willing to buy 500 shares at 975. So, why would I want to do market maker D and then have to call market maker C? So as a trader, I call market maker C and say, say we're selling 1,000 shares. We're selling 1,000 shares. We're hitting your, hitting your bid for 1,000. Uh, P.S., if the market maker C then fails to do that, very testable as well, fails to honor that quote, my minimum obligation as a market maker is 100 shares, but if that market maker fails or to honor this quote displaced or relayed to me verbally, that would be a prohibited practice and test question that's known as backing away. You know, on the test, they might say something like a uh, market maker fails to honor a firm quote. This is a prohibited practice and is known as, and you've got to come up with backing away. All right. So that means then the answer to this question is A, that uh, we would, uh, as a trader at the firm, I could call market maker C because they have the highest bid and they also have the size. They are willing to buy a thousand shares, actually two, but we only need a thousand. Market maker D has the same bid but they're only willing to buy 500 shares at that price. So I hope you found that helpful. Uh, remember, inch by inch, your exam's a cinch. Yard by yard, your exam is hard. And I'll see you for the next explication request.